r slash ask reddit what will never be the same again once the pandemic is over the weird pride surrounding dragging yourself to work when you're sick workplaces need to impose real rules against it maybe maybe now some will but unless people feel more likely to be penalized for showing up than for staying home they'll do it again People need to feel like they actually earn points for staying home when sick, and are putting their job at risk by coming in sick. I think that's what it will take. And of course, making sure everyone has paid sick leave is also crucial, in case that's not obvious. One of my last job, we had two paid sick days. Then they would send emails to the whole company saying that if we are sick we should stay home multiple days so that we do not spread our sickness. Which usually means way more than two days for a single sickness. I asked in a feedback form if we could have more sick days since it was literally saving time and money to the company to avoid having the whole team sick. They sent me some BS chart about staying healthy. I shit you not. Their answer was don't be sick when the problem was literally that colleagues would spread their sickness to others because they would come back to work when they were feeling okay but still infectious. Since they didn't have enough sick days to do otherwise, they were really expecting people to take days off without pay out of the goodness of their hearts. While having the initial sick person out for a couple more days would mean all those other people working and not sick. Actually saving time and money to the company. Hopefully pizza delivery. No contact pizza delivery is the best thing to come out of this. No longer will I have to worry about enjoy your meal. Thanks. You too. I can't lie. I'm a delivery driver and say that every time just to watch how awkward the person gets when they realize what they just said. Sitting in a doctor's office waiting room when you're sick. I feel like lots of people will wear masks to hospitals and doctor's offices from now on. I haven't sat in a waiting room since March. All my appointments have been call when you get here. Wait in your car. We'll call you when it's your turn. The social introvert in me loves it. I can sit in my car and talk on the phone or watch Netflix without bothering anyone. Even the vets are doing this now too. Went the other day to pick up some meds for my dog for Nye. She is terrified of fireworks. Everything happened from the car. Absolutely amazing. No one will trust you if you have the common cold or a slight cough. I have for a long time wished people who had colds would stay home from work. Maybe that will become accepted now. Edit. I understand many people have no choice in this. If it were accepted that this is necessary, perhaps paid sick leave and societal expectations of employers would change. I think sick days, or WFH if you're not feeling 100% will be far more accepted. Edit. To clarify I did mean office work. And yes the US system is beyond ducked. Like so many of our systems seem to be. Huge shout out to all the essential workers and those that don't have the luxury of sick time. You guys are the real MVPs. I really really hope all this sets a new precedent in terms of public sanitation. The amount of places that are like look. We're doing full sanitation procedures to make sure you stay safe. And it's like. You weren't before. Grotty. Edit. Folks I live in the UK. We don't say grody over here. Stop assuming everyone you interact with on the internet is from the US. I really really hope all this sets a new precedent in terms of public sanitation. The amount of places that are like look. We're doing full sanitation procedures to make sure you stay safe. And it's like. You weren't before. Grotty. I can't remember for the life of me which one it was. But there was some fast food place who said something along the lines of we're committed to fighting COVID and have taken extra precautions to ensure the health of our customers. All our servers and food preparers regularly wash their hands on their official Twitter page. They then got demolished in the replies by people saying things like wait, you all weren't washing your hands before? Servers hand are not clean. Cooks know this and that is why when you order food at a restaurant the food is in the well of the plate and not on the lip. Also, Pizza Hut with their we don't touch your pizza after it is cooked marketing. Commuting. I'm sure I will work from home regularly. Traffic jams will not disappear, but will be less common. Yeah you can't put the telework cat back in the bag. Managers gently heard laughing in the distance. I'm never wearing a bra again but by I I I I I I I. You have my support. I'm glad I kept scrolling. It was worth it for the smile this brought to my face. If I didn't have to physically go into work, I'd be right there with ya. 
I wonder if this will cause a boom in the entertainment industry and restaurants. As much as I like eating and watching movies at home, sometimes there is nothing like getting out of the house and being able to enjoy a good movie or a meal out. Though I do hope this causes movie prices to go down. $20 for a movie, and even before the pandemic hit, most movies weren't even worth that money. I think it will, but it will be temporary for 6 months or so and then things will likely go back to normal. Probably minus a certain percentage of people who will permanently stay away for the most part. I'm thinking the same thing will happen with hotels and airlines. They'll go gangbusters for 6-9 months while people get their travel bug out. But when that settles down, I'm thinking things won't go back to the level they were. Business travel especially. What's funny is that will sometimes happen to newer restaurants that open up. They get busy real quick for about 3-4 months. And then all of a sudden, they just lose a huge percentage of the previous people. I have plenty of friends I've lost all respect for. So that's something that's changed. The amount of people I know personally who unexpectedly turned out to be openly anti-science and anti-vaxx is super disappointing and I can't imagine going back to being friends like it didn't happen. I absolutely couldn't be friends with anti-science people. My trust in the government. Wait, you had trust in the government before? It's more I had trust in people to hold the government accountable. Joke's on me. My faith in humanity will never recover. Seriously, when I watched zombie movies I always said there is no way people would be this stupid when a character would be an idiot. Now I say wow, at least a third of the people are total idiots. And then I sigh because I know that if the zombies did come, my best course of action would be to slather myself in barbecue sauce and just get eaten so it's over with. Read World War Z. The movie has, like, nothing to do with the book. The book was basically if covered with zombies. When shit started in China I literally said it's so weird how it's like in WWZ. I didn't know how right I was. Not that I ever did it much previously, but I highly doubt I'll ever eat at a buffet again. In almost all situations I welcome this, except I will miss the Indian food buffet. Cheap Chinese buffet is legendary though. Our healthcare workforce. I'm afraid of a mass exodus of nurses in particular. This pandemic kicked everyone's ass, but none more so than healthcare workers. My mom works for a hospital. The amount of people who've quit is staggering. They had a party to celebrate the ones who didn't quit. My mom and I both work in the nursing home industry. Let me tell you, both our locations are barely functioning. Snow days. It won't be much of a debate anymore it will be more like you know the roads aren't good so you'll just stay home snd zoom for the day we will be back in person tomorrow. As a teacher I have to disagree, at least at the elementary level. Students do not take home their devices every day and I know that they will not be giving devices to each student in K2 once we are back to normal because it is too expensive. Edit. A great case for why one should look at what they wrote before posting. I'll now use this as an example in my class as to why we check our work before turning it in. Spelling mistakes fixed. You made a really good point. My mental health. I'm with you there bud. Mine has gotten utterly ducked. I'm with you both. Mine was pretty up and down before the pandemic, but then lockdown happened and I developed a fairly acute form of agoraphobia from it. I'm not going to recover from that. You're not alone. Either of you. The health of people who had permanent organ damage due to COVID. It's crazy how many people treat COVID like you're just going to be completely fine if you're not in the 1% at risk of dying from it. What's remarkable is that the people calling it a hoax are the same people fighting against healthcare that covers pre-existing conditions. I was self-employed pre Obama care and my wife had Ms. She was literally an insurable. A Blue Cross agent told me one time you're going to just have to insure your kids and write off your wife. Like WTF does that even mean? COVID will definitely be considered a pre-existing condition moving forward. Insurance companies will do everything they can to not have to pay for it. And life insurance will be a non -stutter. I haven't had so much as a head cold in 2020. Guessing the extra sanitization and general cleanliness has been helpful. I always washed my hands like normally but maybe extra focus is a good idea forever. Not working in an office with other people spreading germs around is a big factor. 
In the long term, once the pandemic is over I don't think a whole lot is going to change. But I do see the loss of many small businesses being permanent. There will be fewer people working in offices than before. But I don't think permanent WFH is going to catch on as much as people predict. While some people love WFH, some people hate it, or they are unable to do it effectively. And I think over time there will be some recruitment and retention issues. Those who want a WFH will migrate to companies that are full WFH, while those who want to work in an office will migrate to those jobs. I don't like WFH but I'm worried that many companies will require it, because it is cheaper for them. I also expect that the trend will reverse in 5 years once it is found out that WFH comes with the same problems as outsourcing and that goes in cycles. I feel the opposite. I love WFH and would do so until retirement if I could. But I feel like most bosses companies are super anal and control freaks. In America, at least so I don't see WFH happening as often as some people predict. I think many bosses like to make sure their workers are on task and efficiently and WFH wouldn't allow that kind of control over their employees. Having to sneeze in public. When I sneeze, it makes me want to cough and enough coughing makes me sneeze. I got into this vicious cycle while in line at Costo just after the pandemic started. I never felt more like a criminal in my life as I did at that moment. You monster. For me, grocery shopping. I haven't been inside a store in several months. It's really nice to be able to pull up at a store and have someone load groceries into the trunk. Right now it's free in my city but I would happily pay to use this service. That has been amazing. But in the past year we've gotten some ridiculous substitutions. A lemon is not a substitute for squash. And green food coloring is not a substitute for red food coloring. Same. That's my only issue with it. We had an order where someone substituted a glass Pyrex baking dish for 100 paper plates. Makes no sense. On a personal level, I've learned about what I can and can't live with, what I need around me and what can just drift away with the wind, and it'll make my planning to move out on my own again much much easier. You're going to see a lot of businesses go fully remote permanently, so a lot of people are going to be moving out of cities into the suburbs so they are going to start booming and turning into small cities. I don't think going 100% remote work is going to be viable or even desirable for most businesses even if it's technically possible for them to do so. I do agree many shouldn't and won't go back to full time on Friday 9-5 office hours however for many businesses. Maintaining and operating out of a physical office adds value and reinforces the sense of legitimacy and success in the eyes of potential clients. I think 2-3 days in the office 2-3 at home is going to be the more realistic outcome for most companies. I think that will happen for some, but certainly not all. Maintaining a physical building is expensive and they'd have to justify that those 2-3 days, instead of a full 5, is worth the expense, which is going to be harder to justify. You might see a reduction of office space as people rotate in and out, but at that point not having everyone in at the same time negates a lot of the reason for doing that in the first place. What you might see is some support employees become permanently remote, then they can reduce office real estate. I think the plexiglass dividers at checkouts will stay around. Adult kids living with their family, I think it'll be more widely accepted in the western world. With the abysmal cost of living as a 20 year old on a 20k salary, the western world better ditch those boomer era values cause they just aren't reasonable anymore. I think it's pretty normal in Europe, or some parts at least, this is mostly an issue in the US. 6-10 feet of space between people in waiting lines. Long may this continue. I never want to feel the breath of a stranger on my neck in a queue again. I had to tell a woman in a supermarket last week to back the duck up. She was standing so close to me I thought she was making some sort of advance. Let's wear masks in public whenever we might be feeling under the weather. I always thought that a very sensible and considerate gesture to make when I saw it being done in other parts of the world. Boundaries between work school and home. When many businesses and schools went completely virtual, there was no longer the boundary of work school is at work school and home is at home. Now work school is at home. And many of them feel as though all your time is now their time. 
The common attitude many people have already seen from many businesses schools is you're at home so you're not doing anything anyway. They contact you at inappropriate hours, assume you have all the time in the world to take on a much higher workload, and make demands they wouldn't otherwise make. Breaks days off are also often not respected, as again, the general attitude is you're at home so you're not doing anything anyway. School hasn't really been separated from home for a long time. Just look at all the homework they were loading kids up with daily, including elementary kids. Oh well I only give my students one hour of homework a night. They take seven classes a day. Karen, you do that and they have like two hours a day for self-care family time socialization. The feeling of being in a rave. Passing round water and sharing bodily fluids. Being the thousandth person to use a port loo and singing with all your breath will never be the same again there is no way we can feel that free again without the pandemic thoughts creeping in. A lot of people have said this but personally I don't agree. I'm quite aware of the dangers of coronavirus and currently take all the necessary precautions and believe in it fully. Social distancing, mask wearing, staying at home, etc. But when we have mass vaccination and widespread testing, I will feel perfectly safe and happy doing all the things we used to do at parties and raves before. The risk has always been there. I guess some people are shocked to have it suddenly shoved in front of their face. Duck no. It'll be there. It'll be free. Jesus. Can we keep drive up doctor's visits? I get upper respiratory infections almost every winter and being able to sit in my car and have the doc come to me was magical. Open bracket. No big waiting room little waiting room while miserable. Being able to order drinks through an app while you're at a bar. Movie theaters. I think they'll still be around, but there will be fewer, and it won't be the only place to see brand new movies. People will only go for the experience. I think more drive-ins should be built. There's one near me and it was already so busy pre-covid. I think they'll be the new preference for most people moving forward. There are definitely some movies that are worth going to see in the theater just for the immersive experience, but your typical shitty comedy movie definitely doesn't need to be seen in a theater. Having to go back into an office when working from home produced the same results. I dread the day they make us go back, save the huge amount of money not having to commute every day, plus spending all day with my dogs. Trust in governments. It wasn't good to begin with, but now it is virtually non-existent. They turned one of the biggest tragedies of this century into a power grab. Most governments, all around the world, as far as I'm concerned, there is no forgiveness for them. How I look at some of my co-workers. I thought a lot of them were responsible. This pandemic has shown me their true side. They are lazy and only care about themselves. Now that they don't have a supervisor watching them, they have a completely different attitude. Birthday parties. No more blowing candles. Ever. Again. Let's be real guys. When the pandemic is over and it's safe to go back to normal, society will go back to pre covid times for the most part. Crowded bars and clubs. Concerts. Handshakes. No more masks etc. Though I think it will be gradual and slow within the first few years of the end. I guarantee there will be covered is over parties to compensate for the lack of parties. It's kind of stupid to think people will continue to social distance when it's over. I mean people have a hard time doing it now however I think things like WFH will be a lot more common. Casinos. I thought they were skanky and dirty before covered, but still fun as hell. Now standing at a craps table shoulder to shoulder breathing 20 dudes there and sharing chips with dozens of people for hours sounds ducking gross. The pandemic showed me the true colors of a lot of people and I actually realized why the world is garbage. People are garbage and the few people that aren't like that are treated like they are. I don't know about never. But I fear that people might keep wearing masks just to cover their faces because of self-esteem issues just to clarify. I'm not judging anyone for not wanting to show their face. I just think that even with low self-esteem and or confidence you should like your face is usable. If that makes sense. Covering it should be a choice and not a way of survival in my opinion. A lot of women are happy to wear masks in public because it means they don't receive unwanted comments. They don't have people telling them to smile out of nowhere. Don't have to wear nearly as much makeup to be happy with how they look, etc. 
when it's minus 30 E outside. Mask is just plain warm and comfortable. Before COVID I never considered it as an option. But now I see a lot of people wearing them for that. Tons of families will be missing some important members. Me. I will never be able to see people as mostly good ever again. It feels like most people have been selfish and caring narcissists during this pandemic. I have seen people standing too close to others in queues, coughing and sneezing without masks in public, going to parties, pubs and restaurants and then visiting their parents and not giving a damn that they could kill someone who is vulnerable. Now I view people very differently, including family members who just couldn't bear to stay at home or wear a ducking mask. I now see people as mostly sociopaths. It will no longer be weird to wear face coverings in public so celebrities will always wear them to not be recognized. The blissful ignorance of sticking my fingers in a random bowling ball, then proceeding to eat food without a care in the world. Going outside. I think that wearing masks will be a common thing even after the pandemic. If you are sick you should wear a mask in public. Protect the people around you. Japan has been doing this for years. Sneezing. I have a guy friend who constantly jokes that I have covered if I sneeze once. I tell him no, John. It's from all the goddamn dust and hair and shit that gets in my nose. No, I'm not sick. I'm fine. Even if you sneeze into a mask, you'll get quite a few panicked, worried looks from people who will be going oh no. Here we go again. I have lost a lot of faith in my neighbors. And I am so disappointed and disturbed at how many people casually threaten harm to folks and see no problem with it. Things like saying they're going to knock someone's teeth out if they report them for parties. Things like calling people who are following rules sheeple and accusing parents of locking their children up and depriving them for isolating homeschooling. It's just been sad and it's so disheartening. I'm never going to look at my community the same way again. My will to give a duck about working in an office. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.